Welcome everyone. Thanks a lot for staying with us. You're watching Plain Speak with me, Shivani Gupta. The fight over Congress's pre-poll guarantees in Karnataka is escalating. The Sudaramaya government has now issued a detailed guideline for the implementation of the Gruha Jyoti scheme, which promised free electricity to all households up to 200 units of power every month, and the Shakti scheme that offered free travel to women in state-run transport corporation buses. These are amongst the five guarantees announced by the Congress in its manifesto for the recently held polls. The Sitaramaya government is yet to announce the guidelines for the remaining three, but the two that have been announced are complicating the situation as they come with terms and conditions for the beneficiaries that are completely changing the nature of the benefits announced. It is clear that while the party at that time was confident that there is no real issue of money when it comes to making these promises, their own government is now trying to soften the financial blow to the state exchequer. Congress governments in other states have also been criticized for either delaying or not implementing their pre-poll promises. So has the grand old party ultimately betrayed the public of Karnataka on these guarantees? That's a question we'll take to our guests in just a bit. Let me first break down these terms for the schemes one by one. First up, the big one, the promise of free power by the Congress. Now, 200 units per month were promised. What is becoming clearer is that free electricity will now be dependent on your monthly average consumption. And this average is going to be calculated on the basis of the power used by a household in the last financial year. The power usage up to 10% above the calculated average will be free every month. For instance, if you consumed 100 units average monthly, you will be allowed free power only up to 110 units of power. If the household exceeds the limit, then they have to pay for the excess units used. And all users who use more than 200 units in any case have to pay the full bill amount. Now moving on to the terms and conditions of the Shakti scheme, under which women will be allowed free bus travel in specific state-run buses. But state-run luxury buses, AC buses and non-AC sleeper buses are exempted. 50% of the seats in buses like the, uh, those of the KSRTC, NWKRTC and KKRTC are reserved for men. The Shakti smart cards are going to be issued for the beneficiaries by the transport department, but these two will now take three additional months to be distributed. The problem is that this is not the first time. It's been six months since the Himachal Pradesh elections were won by the Congress party. Free electricity, remember, up to 300 units monthly were promised there too. This hasn't been implemented at all. In fact, now the Chief Minister has said that they will generate additional power over the next three years to make this possible. They also promised 1,500 rupees monthly assistance to women between ages of 18 to 60. After six months, this has been implemented just for the Spiti Valley area. The beneficiaries are going to be around 9,000 right now, while the original scheme promised or envisaged that 10 lakh women will benefit from it. So the big debate that's coming up right now, has the Congress betrayed the public as far as these guarantees are concerned? And is the public going to be wiser? Or this whole culture of uh, offering these guarantees, which are otherwise also called freebies, coming under question now? That's coming up in just a minute. Now, as a popular chief minister, it was his responsibility to set right the things. Instead of doing so, he has just left it. Let's go across to the guests joining us. Dr. Sudha Halkai is the BJP spokesperson, Sanket Yanagi from the Congress Party. Sayed Aslam Pasha is the JDS spokesperson and R.K. Padhyay, senior journalist, who's of course tracked these promises made by the Congress Party very, very closely. Let me in fact begin 
with R.K. Upadhyay. Before I go to our political guest, Mr. Upadhyay, is there a sense of betrayal, if not outright anger, against the government because of the the contours of the two schemes that I've just mentioned and how they completely changed the nature of these promises made? Absolutely, Shivani. I think people are very, very disappointed that the Congress government, day by day, they are watering down the promises that they have made during the elections. Mm. I mean, already there is a talk that this is a Doka Congress Sarkar, you know, Maha Mosa Sarkar. That's what people are saying. Because you promised something, you did not attach any conditions earlier, mm. you know, and then now you're attaching one condition after another. Why is this? I mean, why, why, why didn't you do the calculations earlier? Then now, you know, saying all this because you can't afford it. Didn't you know it earlier? Didn't you make all these calculations? The Congress spokesman have been saying that for one year they've been working on this mm. promises. And what did they do? No, I remember, now, I remember, I covered these elections in some parts of Karnataka. I remember that even after the results were announced, they, they went on to say that there is not going to be any burden on the exchequer to the extent that this is a worry. That the state yeah. is rich enough to manage this. Yes, I mean, see, but uh, Sidramaya has so far not talked about how he's going to fund all this. He's only said it'll cost about 50,000 crores or 50 to 55,000 crores. Mm. Where is this 55,000 crores going to come from? He has not said a word about it. So naturally, it, the burden will be on the people. And one by one, it's coming out. And look at this, uh, you know, Grihad Jyoti scheme. Mm. I mean, this is one of the, uh, you know, the, uh, Dhoka number one. Now, in fact, I've written an article saying that Dhoka number one, Dhoka number two, Dhoka mm. number three, analyzing each one of them. You said 200 units are free to everyone. Everybody, yes. Now, what is that they come up with? They've, they've calculated, calculated for 12 months of the last year. And then say, if you if you consumed 80 uh, units, you'll get 88 uh, units free. Yeah. What happened to 200 units? Yeah, no, and, this, this, know, this, this changes the nature of the scheme completely. I'll come to the I'm, issues I'm, of promising I'm, this in the first place. And, you know, the fact that we've had this discussion over last year as well, where the, where the courts and the EC also got involved in how what kind of promises can be made by parties. Of course, that decision is pending. All parties have to come together on that thing. Also, but I want, they've increased the unit price by... Uh, you know, absolutely. No, you're right. The Which unit price per electric, for, for electricity also has been increased by almost three rupees. So, you yes, know, this yes. is this is like, you know, absolute betrayal, Mr. Yanagi. It's one thing to delay the implementation, but to completely change the contours on top of that, increase the price of the electricity unit in itself. Why didn't you think of this before? Firstly, let me clarify one by one. So, our government, the guarantees given by our party during the campaign is to cater to the needs of the people who have been suffering from the price rise, number one. So, we are mostly concentrating on the people who are underprivileged or the backward or the people who are unable to maintain themselves because of the price rise. Sir, you did not say all this during the elections. You did not say it is only for those people. Did you no, say that during the election? Complete. It is only please for those who are complete. suffering, the, only the poor. Did you say that? You said everybody please, will please get. Please allow me to complete. Let us get some Even I will get, even my wife will get. Okay, let him finish. Let him finish. Yes. No, no. Let let us have some decency. One per, when, when person is making statement, let there be some decency not to interfere or to sabotage Nobody the entire debate. Making false statements, that's all. Don't please make uh, false statements. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Yanagi. Please come to the point. Allow me to say something. So, keeping the keeping in mind the problems that the common man has faced, we have been ad adequately providing them the guarantees, number one. And it is not that we don't want to implement in so far as others are concerned. In the first phase, we have implemented concentrating on the people who are at the lower level of the economic status. And in a phased manner, we will be considering other phase, sums. Phase, no, no, one second. Phase, Mr. Mr. Padhyay, one second. No, no, I have a question. Mr. Yanagi, are you saying this is phase one? I wonder as to Mr. Upadhyay. No, one second, one second. Mr. Yanagi, no, no, that's, no, please no, no, don't I'm make that allegation. He's a resident of Karnataka. No, no, he's a resident of Karnataka. He has the right to ask you that question. He doesn't have to belong to any party. He's asking this question, Mr. Yanagi. Let him ask. No, one second. I do agree that let everybody have their say. We'll allow it. Interjections after that. But Mr. Yanagi, are you telling me now? Because this is not something the government have said. 
Are you saying this is phase one of so the electricity saying, scheme? We are saying in a phased manner we are implementing. Who is saying this? this? The government is not saying this. No, no, that's what we are saying. I'm Who a party representative. You I'm not, not an outsider. No, but the government has not suggested that there's going to be a phase two or phase three here. Just you see, that, that is understood. That is understood. No, Firstly, it's not understood. Mr. On... Yanagi, I'm sorry. It is not understood. You have to clarify this to the public. When is the phase no, two? No. Who is it for? No, in the first phase, the people who are below no, the poverty line. Mr. Phase, Abadhyay, let him finish. Phase. Mr. Abadhyay, please let him finish. Please. Yes. Please allow me to say something. This is not done. No, no, you are talking about phase. Should I continue? If they mentioned it during the elections. Okay, one second. Phase, Mr. Padhyay, I'll, I'll give you an opportunity. Mr. Padhyay, I'll give you an opportunity. Let him yeah, have his yeah. say. We'll, we'll, we'll do some cross-questioning later. Yes, Mr. Yanagi, please finish. Yes, first of all, we are concentrating on the below poverty line and the people who are just nearer to the poverty line. In a phased manner, we would be concentrating on others and so. And also, there are so many changes need to be done not only in respect of the supply of the electricity, production of the electricity, but also to see that it should be economically viable and it should be see, up to the requirement of the people. But sir, so economic end of the day, viability had to be it, seen when you were making these promises. Also, please explain to me, if you are catering, one second, please explain to me, if you're catering to those who are already under, uh, you know, price rise, you know, suffering and the poorest of the poor or the near the poor line, why have you increased the unit price of electricity? Unit price electricity has not been increased by the government. The decision was taken by the Electricity Commission. That's the Electricity oh, Regulatory Commission, which is a quasi judicial authority sir. on 12th of understand. May. They Before we could come to... Government. Please allow me. This is not done. Let him finish. Mr. Mr. Badia, let him finish. I'll give you an opportunity. Please don't speak over each other. Can Please. Can KERC take a decision on its own? It has to get the approval of the government. It should not be one to one, please. What are you talking please. about? Okay. Yes, Mr. Yanagi, others want to come in. I'm sorry, but nobody is buying this. You are, no, in, no, let me, you let are me not clarify. only... Okay, clarify. Let me clarify one by one. Yeah. First, Karnataka Electricity Regulatory Commission is a quasi-judicial authority. And it had taken a decision on 12th of May 2023. And the election results have been announced on 13th of May 2023. And Electricity Commission's decisions would be independent, not being influenced by the election results. And more so that that proposal by the electricity companies or the supply of the production companies was made or the request was made in the month of April based on the demand Have you the objected supply, to it? based on the difficulty in production because of the delay in the rain. So there are so many reasons. No, no, but did you object to it? You're the new government in the state. Since you care so much about the public, have you objected to it? Let me let me clarify that. Firstly, firstly, we have already privatized the electricity regulator, the electricity supply and production company in the year 1999. Since then, it is the private companies which have been operating, though it is having no, the no, control no, of the all state government. The government control. This is they not done. Government. Sir, don't project it like the government has no control over it. That's all that Mr. Upadhyay oh, is, is objecting to. Ultimate, don't don't ultimate try to be too ingenious. Don't try to be too ingenious. Okay, but it's Mr. Upadhyay, let him finish. Otherwise, otherwise, it won't be possible to continue like this. Yes, yeah. Mr. Yanagi. So, when this is the decision to be taken by the quasi-judicial authority, which is like a court, and the decision has been taken, it is not only binding on the individual, but also on the company and all the consumers, including the state, it is binding. We are also one party to it. And it is not that let us understand the concept of a quasi judicial authority. No, no, don't explain me that. Like I want to understand what is the position of the government. You seem to care. You are saying you are taking care of the poorest of the poor, but you are also allowing the increase of electricity unit price by three rupees. How is this okay? Also, one second, one second. And let me go across to some others as well. On top of that, the contours, uh, Miss uh, Dr. Sudha, the contours of yes. this electricity scheme are now absolutely different to what was announced. How should, uh, how is it that this will not qualify as a betrayal and you know, trying to fool the public? 
Yeah, very good evening, Shivani. I would uh, first of all try uh, congratulate you that you have been uh, you are speaking the you are the the voice of the people of Karnataka. I must say today every uh, citizen of Karnataka is facing this with lot of conflicts and confusions. So whatever they have created, in fact, they have created the conflicts in the families also by uh, giving two thousand. They are not uh, specified to whom they should give two thousand for mm. that. Um, Uh, ladies first mm. thing and uh, regarding uh, electricity it is something called in uh, hindi they call it you know iske topi uske sir so this was very much expected uh, by me at least that they are going to do something of this sort and uh, the middleman who is paying the tax and everything he is going to be more tax he is going to be more burdened and uh, they are they are the one they playing their you know their cards very uh, safely they are thinking but it is not like that it is not uh, Uh, the opponents of congress who are uh, arose today or uh, questioning them it is every citizen of karnataka are really disheartened by them and they are questioning and uh, it is they are not uh, scared of anything like the sort of vindictive politics they are playing today you know they have uh, removed uh, pravin natas wife from the job then uh, regarding the syllabus education system they have uh, they try to slice many of the syllabus what was uh, mm-hmm. implied by the bjp government and in not only in that um, uh, most every day we are coming up with one or two cases against uh, any of those bjp or any other people who are commenting on the social media uh, okay. saying that i'll come to that uh, later that's a slightly a separate issue dr something. suda i want to focus on the guarantees today mr pasha i want to come to you Is this a betrayal, or is this just? Of course, part- this is a betrayal. This is a betrayal. This is a betrayal. Okay, Vani, I'm telling you. No, no, understood. I'm asking Mr. Pasha, Pasha this question. No, I understand. I'm asking Mr. Pasha, well, the representative you, of the JDS, the... will this qualify yeah. as a betrayal, or is this something that was the natural course that okay, during elections you say something which is simplified, the fine print only comes after the government comes to power. Well, well, absolutely, Shivani. I'll I'll uh, coin a different word for this. This is called as the uh, partial delivery of promise. I wouldn't call it as a betrayal, but I would certainly call it as a partial delivery of promise. No doubt, uh, you know, the gentleman from Congress he needs to understand that. No doubt, because of these five guarantees, uh, the people of Karnataka have completely trusted your guarantees. and you've got a substantial you've got a substantial advantage in the election because of this five guarantees mm-hmm. now as a common citizen of not as a spokesperson of the uh, uh, jds i am asking you as a common uh, citizen of karnataka sir it is time for you to deliver when you have reaped the benefits of a um, majority a substantial majority mm-hmm. with the promises of uh, guarantees five guarantees it's time for you to deliver the complete guarantees not the partial delivery and at the same time shivani i uh, at the same time uh, shivani i yes these are the social welfare you call it as a social welfare schemes hmm. or you call it as the freebies if they are promised to the people of karnataka definitely they have to be delivered and at the same breath like when we are a regional party we definitely question both the national parties i would want to ask uh, Dr. Sudha and uh, you know the senior journalist also who's been vociferously asking for why is it not delivered. I would also want to ask BJP, uh, sir, can you please help us understand what happened to your guarantees? It's been it's been nine years. What happened to fifteen lakhs? What happened to the black money which was no, plundered no, no, no. by the wealthy? Well- Don't go into that zone. I am sick and tired of this fifteen lakh. No, no, nobody the made that guarantee. No, Mr. Aslam, Mr. Aslam, that guarantee was never made. There is, it was never part of any manifesto or anything. No guarantee cards were published on fifteen lakh. I am sorry, you cannot deviate from this issue and this particular culture of giving these promises, especially free electricity promises. Free Shivani, water promises, free bus deviating. travel promises, and Shivani, compare that am, to that 15 lakhs no, no. thing. No, I'm just sorry, that seconds. was never a promise, and it was seconds. never passed a part of a manifesto. No, no. Just give me 30 seconds. Yes, 30 go ahead. 30 seconds more. Yes. 30 seconds more. I am saying, right? It definitely it is not there in the manifesto. Huh. Are you saying? I want to ask. In the second term, if Modi ji has come in, hmm. are you saying when a prime minister or a home minister stays in an election campaign? We will get the 15 lakh. We will build the smart cities. We will no, get the black money plundered back to get, uh, India. Please understand is what this, the government is not about. This is not a promise. One by one. One by one. Smart, one smart one city. city. One second. One second. Please don't confuse issues. Can I? Can I just come in? I request everybody to please speak when I come to them. Do not speak over each other. Mr. Pasha, I understood. I understood your point, but I am not doing any monkey balancing today, and I am not going to ask. 
when I'm discussing Karnataka guarantees, I'm not going to talk about smart cities. I'll discuss that on the day when I discuss smart cities. And smart cities yeah. and bullet trains are a different issue than this 15 lakh thing. That 15 lakh was so never a promise. Not, but I am discussing what has happened in Karnataka and I'm discussing this particular yes. culture of announcing freebies before elections to fight elections. All right, I'm not going to that deviate my debate. But yes, Mr. Padhyay, yeah. now I come to the overall question of this culture. You look at Himachal, some of the key promises, which are the biggest vote garnering promises, haven't been fulfilled. Either it is taking too long or they're not being fulfilled at all. In Punjab, that has happened. The Amadi Party hasn't fulfilled some of its key promises that they made and won the elections with. Now this is happening in Karnataka. If it goes on like this, I don't think it's going to be that easy to fool the public election after election. I, I think people will learn this les uh, lesson from this, Shivani, hmm. because the Congress leaders kept saying that, you know, all these guarantees, you can trust us, you can trust us. In fact, they even gave it in writing. Hmm. Both Shukumar uh, and Sidharamai have, uh, you know, signed those, uh, you know, uh, cards and given lakhs of families that it has been distributed. So what does it mean? It means nothing but dokha. They're given a dokha to the people. At least they should have done the Delhi model. That they give it 200 units free to everyone, everyone, irrespective of their consumption, whatever. So up to 200 units free. So yeah. why didn't they do that in Karnataka? Okay. That they have not done. Okay, but let, also, let me bring in, let me bring in the... One minute, one minute. Just, yes, just, very just quickly. 30 seconds, yeah. Just 30 seconds. You see, the consumption in Karnataka, 1.29 crore households consumes an average of just 68 units. And all these people are hoping that... They to improve their consumption, get a fridge in the house or get a TV so that we have up to 200 units. Now, what have you done? You have just kept it at that level and said 10% more. Yeah, get 10% extra and get that much free as so long as it's under 200 from, units from per month. Units, they'll get 75 units. What about 200 units you promised? Right. So this no, is that's a, a fair question. Of... That's a fair question to ask. But let me bring in Mr. Yanagi and please allow him to finish his point. Mr. Yanagi... The Congress is very dangerously entering their, this zone where your promises are going to be called Jumla. If you keep doing this state impossible. after state after state where you promise something and then either the riders are so confusing that it changes the contour of the scheme completely or you fail to deliver on those pre-poll promises, then this is what a Jumla is. So let me make a few points very clear without yeah. any disturbance of the other participants. Firstly, this debate or the dis discussion is concentrated on the promises made by the Congress and others, hmm. except the BJP and the BJP ruled states. If it is a case to be considered in respect of a general promises made during the election hmm. and not being fulfilled or there is a delay being fulfilled, that should be considered equally to that of the BJP. I'll tell but you why. Except BJP, the, the entire discussion is... No, no, no. We are very happy to include the BJP. But I'll tell you what the qualification is. Yeah, Once again, thing. since you asked a very no, important no, question. Me, Once again, because, I'll give you time. No, I'll give no. you time. Mr. Yanagi, since you made this point, let me make it very clear to you. We are talking about stuff that is promised for free. That's the distinction I'm making. A promise of development of something, whether it is 50% fulfilled, 60% fulfilled, that's a separate category. I'm particularly focusing on promises that guarantee something for free for either the entire electorate of a state or to some residents of the state. And that is why I'm discussing these promises. Have we at any point of time discussed about 20 lakh, 20 lakh crore hmm. promise made by Mr. Modi during his uh, corona? We have not discussed. 20 we lakh of what? How many people have received what it? We do not want to discuss it because that, that is the propaganda. And uh, uh, please ask that senior manifesto. No, Mr. Mr. Padhyay, one, one second, please allow him to finish. Yes, only Mr. Yanagi. Yes, please finish. And uh, we don't want to discuss because that should not be the propaganda. No, no, forget that. Nah, you BJP. have come to power in Karnataka. You explain your performance. So that is how we have not completed even one month. Huh. And the BJP is so restless. And people have given us the complete mandate. We are mandate not restless. So the people of Karnataka are restless. That's why I'm keeping quiet. The people cabinet. of Karnataka are questioning. Please allow that. Uh, please ask him to at least speak. So they, he's interfering continuously. This is no, only me and Mr. Yanagi, please. He only me and Mr. Yanagi. Give him the time that so he needs. Nobody else to be speaking over him, please. Only Mr. Yanagi and me. Yes.
the people are wise enough that there are some administrative decisions to be taken mm. the people are wise enough that it would be implemented in a phased manner the people are wise enough that earlier also we have implemented our promises mm. people are wise enough that we will certainly deliver whatever we have okay. promised can i ask you a question now past experience in delivering and the people are believing but the bjp is betraying the mandate of the people it want to create they problems will because it they will answer to the electorate if they betray i am you cannot say just because they are betraying it is okay for me to betray but let me ask you a question you are talking about the fact that the public is very wise they understand that there are some nitty gritties involved why was the party not wise enough before the elections to understand what the impact on the exchequer is going to be today you are doing those calculations is it not your responsibility to do that before elections in in advance itself we have said during the election campaign itself we have said that we are getting prepared and we will implement it and we have already got the calculations how to implement it and in in which manners first then why are you not giving 200 generate, units you if you had planned for it why are you not giving 200 units to everybody so we will do it in a phase manner why so haste for the bjp you because you promised that question. you will do it the moment you come to power why did you have to say that so we have been doing it so it is in the pipeline let us understand that we have not declared something and we have closed the chapter Okay. It is in the process of implementation. Uh, let me give. Let me give Dr. Sudha has who has been wait, waiting very patiently thirty seconds. Yes, final comments, Dr. Sudha. They are just you know yeah, confusing you know it is a saying called as you know if you can't conclude confuse it. So they are just confusing the public of Karnataka. They are uh, not they are not, they are unable to stand up to the expectations of the people of Karnataka and they don't have any words against uh, other than blaming saying that you know BJP is uh, eager or BJP is uh, waiting for the answers. No, we we BJP are sitting quietly calmly. waiting to see your promises to be fulfilled to the people of okay. karnataka that's it we'll wait and, and see how this goes it very carefully no absolutely the people will watch countries. and i feel like uh, this whole culture of promising quote on quote freebies before elections that will have a diminishing return because if this keeps happening in state after state for whatever party that you deliver the moon do you promise the moon but don't deliver even half of it it will come under doubt by the public itself i leave it at that i do thank our guests for joining us i